Need a new pair of chainmail earrings? Then this tutorial's just for you. Hi, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our channel. It's really great to see you here. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to create our falling star earrings. Okay guys, let's get into it. Okay, here's a sample piece of the earrings that we'll be making today. Okay, and to make the earrings, a pair of earrings exactly as they appear here, you're going to need the following components. So we're working in bright aluminium, um, 18 gauge AWG, which is 1.0 millimeter diameter wire. And we're using um, 7 mil ID. Okay, and you're going to need two of these rings. We're also using 3.5 millimeter ID rings, and you'll need 80 of these. And then finally, we're also using 3 millimeter ID rings today, and you're going to need a total of 34 of those. You're also going to need um, two beads. These are Swarovski's faceted rounds, six millimeters. Um, I would suggest using these. I haven't tested it with any other bead size, so um, I can't guarantee how well anything else will work. A, a pair of, I'm just using stainless steel ear posts, but whatever you've got handy, I'm sure will be absolutely fine. Also, I would suggest uh, some sort of twist tie. You're going to need that for part of the process. And of course, last but not least, you're going to need two pairs of smooth jawed pliers. Um, I would suggest some finer gauge, finer tipped nose ones if you've got them, given that we're working with 18 gauge and in such small ring IDs. So these are from our Zuron range. Um, these are our short nose pliers, um, and these ones are the chisel nose pliers. We're going to start today by making um, the star piece. Now, in order to do that, we first need to make up some short pieces of two two chain. Okay, so I'm just going to open up a ring, pop on two more rings. Now, this is using our 18 gauge 3.5 millimeter ID rings. Okay. So just make up a short chain however you go about doing that. You don't have to do it the way that I am. Now I just want to say in advance, we are using very small rings here today. Um, I will do my best to try and keep my thumbs and things out of the way. Um, but please forgive me if my closures aren't 100% as um, I'm not working with magnification, which I usually do when I use rings this small. And uh, so some of my closures might be um, not so great. So please forgive me in advance and um, hopefully everything will turn out okay. All right, so we need to make a total of five of these short pieces of chain. Okay, so just two, two, make sure all the rings are closed up. So you go ahead and finish up making all your pieces of chain like this until you've got five sets and then I'll greet, meet you back here to show you what we do next. So I've finished making my five little pieces of chain and now I'm going to pick up one of our um, seven millimeter ID rings and I'm going to feed our pieces of chain on to this ring. So to do that we just go through one pair of rings on each piece of chain until we've put them all onto our large ring. Okay. And number five. So just like that, close your ring up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn each of these pairs of rings into half Byzantine units. So we're just going to deal with one at a time. So separate out one of the pairs, hold it by the ring, okay, by the large ring, and then 
flip one end of the, the each end of that pair one to each side pinch it up against the large ring separate out those rings there on top and then taking another opened 3.5 millimeter ID ring feed it straight through that gap you can see there picking up those two rings that we just folded back okay so scoop in there and pick that up close your ring up and then do exactly the same with a second ring okay so go straight through the middle there just follow the same path as your first ring so that you've got a pair of rings there and so we've now got a half Byzantine unit formed and we're going to do the same to every other pair of rings on our um, or other, every other pair of rings on our piece okay so just once more to show you that separate out one pair of rings flip back the um, end pair so that you've got one sitting on each side like this and then continue to flip them all the way back and squeeze them against the big ring okay once you've done that separate out the rings that are on the top so that you can see those rings that we just flipped back and you can see that space that's going straight through the middle here this space just here okay that's where we're going to put our first ring so taking up an opened 3.5 millimeter ID ring feed it through that space making sure you pick up both of those rings okay close it up and then repeat with a second ring okay just make sure you pick up but just those two rings in the middle okay and now we've got uh, two half Byzantine sections okay so just continue to go ahead and do that with the other three sections and I will meet you back here to show you what we do next so I've converted all our little chain pieces to half Byzantine units and so our work should now look like this it's still a little loose but that's okay that's the way it's supposed to be so what we're going to do now is we're going to join the half Byzantine units uh, to the one next to it and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to take up two of the rings from this half Byzantine unit and two of the rings from the one beside it so we just simply go down through one two from one unit and then scoop up one two from the next unit okay and then taking up another ring we scoop up the two rings that are left over from that unit there that we've just already joined okay we're going to join that up to the one next to it okay and we're just going to place one more ring and close our ring up now what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm just going to go back and double these rings up uh, this will help us a little bit with the next stage which is popping in our bead in the center so this tightens it up a little bit for us which will help um, because if it's too loose it becomes a little hard to deal with um, but we don't want it so tight that we can't pop that bead in there either so if you just go back and, and double up those three rings at this stage okay uh, one more okay so all the three rings that I've just placed have now been doubled and my next step will be to insert the bead into the center here okay so taking up one of your beads okay so as I said this is a Swarovski six millimeter faceted round bead we're just going to pop that basically into the center there so this will take a little fiddling um, 
a little bit of man maneuvering the rings around until you've got that tucked away in there. Okay. And once you've got it tucked in the center there, all nice and snug, we're going to close up these other half Byzantine units. So making sure you hold on to your bead because you don't want it to pop out at this stage. We're then taking up some more uh, 3.5 millimeter ID rings and just going back through and closing the remaining two units up. So there's one ring placed. I'm going to do this very carefully. We don't want the bead to pop out at this stage. And there's our second ring. Okay, so we've got it all closed in, but we just need to go back and double up those two rings that we just placed. So I'll do that now. Okay. And the last one. Okay, so there you go. We've created the star piece of our earrings. Okay, so I just want to point out at this stage that although that bead is sitting in there quite nicely, if there's pressure applied on the middle, it can pop out. So if you are worried about that happening, I would suggest uh, applying a little bit of some type of glue or epoxy uh, to the back of your piece. Now I'll link in uh, the descriptions below to a PDF file that I found um, from Swarovski themselves um, outlining various ways of fixing um, their beads and, and rivolis and such and in that paper is a list of the glues that they recommend. I thoroughly uh, recommend to you downloading um, this PDF and saving it on your system. It'll give you some idea of glues that will work with the Swarovski. Now I want to point out to you this piece that I made, I made a couple of mistakes with this one. First, when I glued it in place, I didn't make sure that the hole was not pointing forward. So don't make my mistake. Make sure that if you are going to glue this in place that you've got that hole pointing um, you know, to the side, not front to back like I have. And then I also used, because I had it on hand um, and we sell it, a super new glue which is great for metals, but it seems to have had some sort of reaction to the back of this. Now, I would not recommend in this case using the super new glue uh, with these earrings. Um, the um, Swarovski recommends this, which is also a product we sell uh, called GemTac. Now, I've never used this before. Um, I'm going to use it today uh, for the first time in this tutorial. Uh, so we'll be learning together. But if you don't have something like this, Swarovski also suggests things like Araldite and uh, Loctite. And I'm thinking maybe even something like UV resin. If you have access to UV resin, something you're going to want something that dries fairly quickly and something that dries clear. Now, I've never used this before. I'm not 100% sure. This is a white glue. Um, I'm hoping that it dries clear. But just to give you an idea, um, you know, decide which is the back of your piece. Make sure you don't have that hole showing. So there's no hole showing there. And then just apply a small amount of glue to your work. So as I said, this is white. Um, I've never used it before, so I'm hoping it's going to dry clear. Um, but if not, as I said, uh, Loctite or Araldite, something like that, or a UV resin, I believe. Don't quote me on the UV resin, but I believe something like that might be helpful. But as I said, download um, the PDF that I'm going to be linking um, in the description, and it'll give you a list of glues and I believe some epoxies that you can use.
Okay, so I've set the star aside for the glue to dry. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to start on the um, JPL section of the bracelet, this, this chain section here. Okay, so to do that, first off, we're going to take up one of our 18 gauge three millimeter ID rings, okay? So we're working with our smallest rings now. And I'm going to close up that first ring, okay? And then through that first ring, I'm going to actually apply my twist tie. You really do need some sort of um, handle or something to hang on to with this weave. You're working with such tiny rings. Um, it's just so very hard to do it without a handle. So if you don't have a twist tie, maybe a paper clip, something like that will help you. Okay, and then we're just going to make up A small piece of JPL so to do that we're going to take an open piece we're going to go through that ring now I've I do have other demonstrations here for JPL and I will give you a link up here at the top of the screen to take you to one of those tutorials to give you perhaps a little bit more in-depth um, but uh, this should be enough to help you make your earrings okay so we've got two like that two rings on there and what we're going to do we're going to flip that ring back there so it sort of lays against our first ring okay and see that eye there where they've overlapped that's where we're going to place our next opened ring and we're just going to go straight through there and then what we're going to do we haven't let go of our pliers yet so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the end of our work up and we're going to sort of put our thumb on that ring that's there on the second from our right or in this case the middle ring because we've only got three rings but the second from our right we're going to place our thumb in there and you can see that eye that's where those two rings overlap but that's where we're going to put our next ring but we want it to also sit under this first ring that's in here Okay, now that sounds a little complicated, but it's not that bad. So keeping our thumb there in place, holding those rings in, I'm gonna go through the eye that's formed by um, the, the second and the third ring there, making sure it sits underneath the first ring. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna close that ring up. I'm not gonna let go of this ring with my right hand. I'm gonna hold on to that ring exactly as I had and I'm just gonna let the work fall down. And then once it's done that, I'm going to pick it up again. I'm going to insert my thumb in here, okay? So this is our last ring. This is our previous to last ring. That's the ring that we're going to put our thumbnail on top of. And in there, and it's very hard to see with these small rings. So if you haven't done JPL before, it will be uh, to your benefit to check out that other tutorial. But in there, you can see an eye where those last two rings overlap. That's where we're going to place our next ring, making sure it sits under the, underneath the ring that's already in that eye. Okay, so taking up our open ring, we're going to feed it straight into there. Okay, making sure it stays underneath. We're going to close that up. And we're just going to let our work fall okay don't let go of your right hand plier bring your work back up again and again putting your thumb on top of that second to last ring you can see that in there where those two rings the last two rings overlap is an eye where we've already got a ring here in place okay so that's where we're going to place our next one into that eye making sure it sits underneath the ring that's already in the eye, going straight through, doing it up, okay, picking our work up, putting our thumb on top of the second to last ring, okay, opening up that space that's in there. It's a very little space because these rings are small, but it is in there. I'll show you um, if I can get it close enough without blurring it, in there, okay. 
that's where we want our next ring to go, making sure it sits underneath this ring that's already in the eye. Okay, so pick up another opened ring and feed it straight through that eye. Okay, picking up the two last rings there and close. Okay, and then bringing up the tail of our work again, putting our thumbnail there on top of that next to last ring so that we can see that space in there. And that's where our next ring is going to go. Okay, so it is a little fiddly at this gauge. So if you haven't done JPL before, I suggest that you try one of the, the thicker gauges until you've got it um, down pat. Okay, so again, I'm just picking up my work and putting my thumb over that last second to last ring to open up that gap. I'm opening up another open another ring, feeding it through the gap there, but underneath the ring that's already in place and closing it up. Okay, so your work should look like this. So you can see that we've got this row of rings just here where they all go they slant upwards, okay, from left up to right. The one underneath it slants downwards from left down to right. And then that one, it slants upwards, okay? So that's what we're looking for with JPL. If you're finding you've got two rows that both slant in the same direction, um, then there's been a mistake and we need to go back and start again but we want each of those rows to slant in a different direction to the previous one. Okay, so we just keep adding rings until you get the length that you, you want your earrings to be. Now, my chain was about two and a half centimeters in length. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter, you can make one pair, one earring long, one earring short, completely up to you. That's your design choice, okay? So I'm just going to keep going and making this JPL piece until I've reached about two and a half centimeters in length. And I will show you guys what to do next. So once you've reached the length that you require, place your last ring. Um, but before you close that up, take up your star unit and feed that opened ring through one of the points. Okay, and then close that up. Okay, so it should look like that. And then on the other end, you can remove your twist tie. And then I just took another three mil ID ring and fed it through the last ring or the first ring really in the weave there. I found that if I tried to keep it in pattern the earring twisted too much so I'm just going to go straight through the um, through the last ring and then before I close that I'm going to pop on my stud and then close that ring up. Okay, so there you go. There's your finish falling star earring. Okay, so further to the Gemtac glue, which as I stated before, I'd never actually used before, um, it does appear to be drying clear, so that's great. And it seems to be holding reasonably well. It's not, I won't call it 100% solid, but it certainly will withstand uh, the bangs of normal earring wear. The one thing I have noticed is that it is very... Um, very liquidy, very viscous, and it 
seems to have gone into uh, the bead itself through the bead hole. Now I'm hoping that when that completely dries, it will dry clear. So as I said, I'm just learning here with this. Um, I would definitely suggest reading the document that I've linked below. And um, based on my limited experience with actually gluing these Swarovskis in, um, I would be looking at using something that is already clear um, because I am a little concerned that that glue that's trapped inside there in the bead hole, bead hole, whether it's actually going to go clear or whether it's going to retain that line. Now, you may be happy with that line um, like that, and that's great if you are but it's just something to keep in mind um, if you do want to glue um, your bead into place to give it that little bit extra security well that's it guys that's our tutorial for today I hope you enjoyed um, watching it and that uh, you're able to make a pair of your own falling star earrings if you did enjoy the video today don't forget to give it a thumbs up here at YouTube share comment below the video we would love to hear from you guys um, if you really, really like the video and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've also got a ton of other videos you can check out. And last but not least, don't forget to have a look at our online store where we've got all the components and bits and bobs that you could need for your chainmail journey. Alright guys, thanks again and I'll catch you next time. Bye.